Hey everyone, this is Andrew Nagel, and this is my video on how to make a bar channel setting. And so I call it a bar channel setting because I always use square wire for this, and I've got a 21G square here right now. I'm also going to be using 30G round to bind it all together. Uh, now you can also use like 21G square for this, and uh, you can change it up with different gauges, um, you know, to match the different sizes of facets that you use, or the different sizes of faceted stones that you use. Um, like if you use 2 millimeter, you're obviously going to want to use a smaller gauge of wire, um, versus if you use like 4 millimeter stones, you're going to want to use a thicker like 20G uh, gauge wire. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be setting some amethyst and a garnet in this channel for you guys. And to start it off, you're going to want to take, you know, your first base wire. Then you're going to want to take the wire that you're using to attach it. Um, you could use, you could be using like 28G, but that would be a little bit difficult to manipulate around all the tight corners in here. That's why 30G is a little bit better suited for these uh, finer detailing things. You're going to want to just take that 30G and wrap it around your base wire like so. Make sure it's very nice and tight together on there. So that way you've got a good clean end result. Now you're going to want to take your other wires. Hold them together like such on your index finger and then pinch them with your thumb. Then you're going to bring your 30G underneath and back over then underneath and back over again <clears throat> then underneath and back over and underneath and back over good four times make sure it's nice and on there the other thing you can do is take I, I like to use these uh, plastic tipped pliers to uh, flatten down some of these detailings that we do. It's a good way to flatten down some of your weaves and stuff as well. Now here's where we're going to start to build the kind of nest for the stones. We're going to take our two middle wires and bring them straight down like that. Make a good 90 degree angle there. Just the middle two. Leaving your two outer ones like that. And take your pliers and straighten those out a little bit. And then now depending on the size of your stones, you're going to you know, create the appropriate depth between the top and the bottom of your channel for your stones. You know, you don't want it too big, but you also don't want it too small that you can't fit them in there. I'm doing just about the tip of a needle nose plier in there, and that's usually what I do for about all my channels, and it works for a good variety of facets. Um, there's a Every once in a while, there's a couple of stones that are just a bit larger that require um, a bit more wider berth between your top and bottom. Now you're also going to take the other bottom wire and bend it straight back up so that way it's parallel again with the top, creating this kind of prong here. So once again, after you've brought both the middle two wires down, you're going to then bring them back up parallel with the top. 
And then once you've got them running back parallel with the top, you're going to want to take them and open them up just a little bit like this. And then after they're open, you're going to want to bend them back to the center so that way they create an open space between themselves as well. So that way you've got this almost little cage going on here, as you can see in there. Now this is the loose start, and things are going to be a little flimsy at this point, but this is where we're going to tighten everything up. Now your 30G will be hanging off to the side here, and I like to take it around one of the bottom wires, it really doesn't matter which one, and start weaving it in between the bottom two, so that way it runs kind of in this midsection here between the middle and the top, just like that, and make sure that's nice and tight. And then after you've done that once or twice, go ahead and take it around the other side of the bottom as well. And then back over to the other side. Kind of readjust those there a little bit. All right. Now keep doing that just for a little bit until you get to the point where your bottom wire starts to go parallel with the top wire again. Now at this point, you're going to want to bring your wire and you're going to be wanting it to run on the inside to the out, so that way you're bringing your wire this way as you're wrapping it around. It's really not super important, just that's how I kind of prefer to have it laying. If it's laying the other way, it's honestly okay. But what you're going to do then is then bring that wire from this bottom right over to the top left, running in between the top wires. So once again, you're going from the bottom right up to the top left. So you're going to bring it from this wire down up to the opposite one, or up to the opposite wire. And then what you're going to do is wrap it around that top left once, like so. Then bring it back down to the bottom left. And what you're going to be doing here is running it from your top one in between. So that way it's going in between the bottom two. There's a lot of crisscrossing here. So once you're on that bottom left, you're going to then crisscross again in between the top two wires back over to the top right and then from that top right down to the bottom right crisscrossing it in between and then wrapping it around so i'm going to show you that one more time on here so we're going and we're creating this kind of x pattern you can kind of see in there We're going from the bottom right to the upper left, crisscrossing in between all of those wires.
and then from that upper left back down to the bottom left. And once again, make sure you're going in between to wrap it around. And then from that bottom left up to that upper right. So that way you're creating that, that cross pattern with the wires in there. A little bit difficult to see, but you can kind of see that going on in the center there. And you're creating also that kind of weave pattern that we were doing on the bottom here on the sides. You're going to be bringing your 30 gauge again from your bottom right in between to your upper left and then from your upper left down to your bottom left and then from your bottom left up to your top right. Now, I know that sounds a little complex but once you get the hang of it it'll be really easy and you'll just start getting the weave pattern going on but that's where you'll start creating the first kind of hold for the faceted stones in there. And then once you're back down on your bottom, everything's going to start feeling a lot more stable at this point. <clears throat> you're going to start doing your weave again from your bottom right over to your bottom left. You're just going to take it over and then under and then over and then under and back over and then under and back over again and just repeat that cross weave until you've covered the section that's long enough for a stone So as you can see in there, we've just done the weave basically about three millimeters worth. So that way we can put the stone in there and it'll sit right on that weave. And that's why I'm doing three stones on this. I'm going to show you this process three different times here. And so once you've got your weave going in there, I like to take my stones, you can either do it with a little claw or you can do it with your little flat pliers like this. And I like to set it kind of in between here and run it down until it sits on those bars in there. And then using my finger as a guide and also the pliers, I nudge that little stone into its slot, like so. Now this first one might give you a little bit of trouble, but once you get it set in there, and it's sitting in between those bars really nicely, I always like to <clears throat> make sure that the top of the stone is sitting right in between the bars. And then you're going to do that cross weave pattern again. You're going to be recreating the section we did here, just right over here. So you're going from your bottom right up to your top left and make sure you're going over the top of it because you're going to utilize that pole to hold that stone in. and then wrap it underneath that top one and back over and then back under. And then once you're back under, you're going to weave it in between the bottom two and then back under that bottom one, the bottom left, and then over the bottom left and through the bottom to the right. And then over at the bottom left 
you're going to pull that one in between up over to the top right. Then you're going to wrap it once around that to really secure that on there. And as you can see here, we've kind of locked in that stone. Then you're going to bring it from your top left back down to your bottom right. Then wrap it around that one again to lock it in. Alrighty, and so once again, we're going to do a weave section on the bottom to create another section for the next stone. So wrap it around once, and then go across, wrap it around once, and then back underneath, and across over to the other side. Wrap it around once, then back underneath, and across over to the other side. And just continue on doing that weave pattern. Until you have a section long enough for the stone. Just like we did on the first one. So that's kind of why I did different colored stones, so that way you'd be able to see these a little bit better. I feel like the same color just kind of blends in after a while. And just place that stone in there. Oh, kind of came loose. Got to nudge it back in there with those pliers and starting over on the left side this time it doesn't matter which side that you start on underneath here so long as you're locking these stones in there bring that crisscross again from the bottom to the opposite upper bar so we're starting from the bottom left bring it to the upper right Wrap it around once, bring it down, and then wrap it around the bottom, and then bring it from that bottom right to the upper left, and wrap it around from the upper left to the bottom left. And here's what the bottom should be looking like. It should have been a little bit tighter where this facet is sitting, but as you can see the weave forming down here, we just got a nice crisscross pattern going on here. You can always give that a nice push in to tighten everything up a little bit. As you can see, we've got two of our stones set in there now and we'll move on to the third so again go from this bottom left under and then wrapped around the bottom right then go back under wrap it around that bottom left and just continue doing that weave until you've got the three millimeter space needed for the stone. If you're doing a four millimeter stone, then obviously you'd need a bit bigger space. If you're doing a two millimeter stone, you're going to need a little bit smaller space. All right. And once again, you can use like a little gem claw and then just slide those gems 
in that little catch that you've built. And then you're going to be bringing your 30 gauge. Once again, we're going to be doing that cross pattern where we go from the bottom to the opposite upper. So from bottom left to the upper right. You're always going to want to make sure that those stones are sitting in there flat and that the top bars are holding them flat in there too. If those bars aren't sitting on the stone, it's not going to hold the stone in there very well and it'll jiggle around and just be loose and that's not good. So once you're making sure that bar is touching down on that stone, tighten that bit around and pull that top part down to the bottom, <clears throat> bottom right. Wrap it around once and bring it from the bottom right to the upper left. Wrap it around once again, making sure that it's tight against that stone. And then bring it from the upper left down to the bottom left. And once again, you're going to go from the bottom left to the upper right. And then from the upper right to the bottom right. Then bring it crisscross again from the bottom right to the upper left. And then from the upper left down to the bottom right. going to tighten those up a little bit. All right, now that we've got our stone set in there, <clears throat> as you can see, I've done a little bit of a wider weave here versus the gaps in between the stones. I'm also going to have another video where I do one where there's kind of no gap in between the stones. Um, but I like doing this sort of uh, distinctive space between them. I just like the aesthetic of it, really. Um, and then I always put these larger weaves on the ends and beginning of the channel to just kind of add stability to it. And once you're at this point, once you've added as many stones as you want to do, you could basically continue that pattern on, you know, this whole section of wire. Um, you're going to be manipulating these bottom two posts again. What you're going to do is you're going to take it in. I, I start with the left generally. You're going to bend it in like that. So that way it's bent kind of over the other bottom post. Then you're going to make it zigzag back to the center. And then you're going to do the same with the opposite side. So bring it over and then make it zigzag again so that way it's parallel and super close with its bottom counterpart. And then what you're going to do is take both those middle parts and bring them in between the top two bars and just go straight up. Be a little bit careful here. When you bring them in, they might not be super close together and they might push these outer two. So when you're bringing them in, just be cognizant of that and don't stretch these too far apart so that way you don't rip this inner part here. 
But yeah, as you can see here, we've just brought the middle two wires in between the top two. That way we've made another 90 degree angle kind of like that. And then once they're up like that in between the center, you're going to bend them back down so that way they're running straight with these top wires again. I always kind of like to put my plier or my finger here and then bend them back down and use the pliers to bring everything together. So bring it back down so they're running all together like that. Once they're all running together, I take my 30G and I wrap it around one of the middle wires until it's just all the way ran up that wire. And then I wrap it around both of them to bring them super tight together. And then when it's right about at the point where it's going to start running over these, I bring the wire all the way around over the top and bring these flat. Wrap it underneath and then back over, underneath and then back over if you need to. Flatten those out a little bit. And underneath and back over until you've got them nice and secure with each other. Then the other thing I kind of like to do, because usually, unless you have a plan for like detailing with these. unless you have a plan for detailing with uh, these right here, I like to bring one of them off to the side and wrap my 30G around it to kind of just secure that down on there. Another thing you could do is continue on and do a weave with these and do some sort of detailing there. But yeah, if you're done with your 30G, then you could obviously clip that there, and you are done. And so definitely try and keep those rounds in there as centered as possible. Sometimes they like to come a little bit loose, and that's not good, but what you can do is make sure those bottom catches are super tight against there so that way it really locks those stones in there. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, thank you all. And yeah, definitely let me know your comments and concerns and any ways I could make these better for you. Thank you very much and have a good day.